Thank you all for coming on Public Square to talk about home visiting in New Mexico. I'd like to start with our moms, Ordiana. You are an early childhood education advocate. You know a lot about <laughs> early childhood. Why did you want a home visitor? My visitor? partner and I were in our mid-30s. We're pretty well established and with our educations and our careers, but nothing like parenthood to totally knock you off balance. I mean, it's a complete life change. So there's constantly questions coming up. And then also in terms of getting tools to make sure that he's developing or that we're helping him in his development. So, you know, maybe I shouldn't be watching two hours of The Bachelor with him. <laughs> I should probably be reading to him and singing. And, you know, you would think that it's common sense, but it's always great. Um, it's just overwhelming to be a parent. So it's great to sit down and have a set of tools and an, an, an expert, an advocate that can help you navigate that. I want to turn to Amanda. You also used home visiting. Why was this something that you wanted, that you saw it? I got pregnant when I was 20 years old, and it was unexpected. When I got pregnant, I didn't know anything about um, child development. I didn't know anything about infants. I didn't know anything at all. And I, um, I looked into, tr into home visiting, and it, I read that um, a home visitor would come to my home, and they would teach me everything I needed to know about parenting and child development and infants and I can be a part of the program for as long as I want and basically they were there for me throughout the whole way. Basically every, every question that I had when it came to a child, it was answered. Even more, even with my parenting skills and everything. Did you feel more confident? I did. Mm -hmm. at, at first I would just read everything online and just get everything from the internet. But with home visiting, she came to my home and she also has kids as well, so she knows how it is to raise a child. And she gave me advice and tips and things that I should do. Is there anything that, that um, relatives or well-meaning friends said you should do that you learned from the home visitor, like, oh, maybe not such a good idea? <laughs> there are. I mean, like one of the things now, I have a three-year-old and my home visitor, um, she suggested I should put her in daycare. Why did she want you to put her in daycare? Why? Mm -hmm. For child development, interacting with kids with her age and helping her with her speech. Okay. Are you going to do it? I am. In the, I, I plan on putting her in the fall. Diane, uh, you run the program that Oriana is using. Why is this important in New Mexico? Well, I think we have to look at every other state has bounced back. In terms of the economy, we have not. And I think part of the reason why we are not able to attract good employers and, and, and keep good employers is, is the lack of a good educational system to support our children. And that starts at the very beginning. That starts in home visiting. We also have an overwhelming poverty rate. And we also have um, all of the other indicators, um, adverse childhood experiences, ACEs, all of those things that go along with children living in poverty and children living in, in a, a disadvantaged environment. So I think it's very important for us to help dig ourselves out of of the place we're in. And I think if we don't do something about about it, and St. Joseph can only do so much because we're very close to capacity um, our, right now. And um, when we get to capacity, we'll have to turn families away. And so that will basically be a no list okay. for those families because there isn't enough state funding now to support that. You're privately funded. We are privately funded through, but, through an endowment, yes. But most of the home visiting in the state is either federally or state funded. That's, that is okay. correct, yes. Okay. And is anyone eligible for your program? Um, anyone. Uh, we, are, we, are, we provide a universal program, so we serve families of all ages, ethnicities, languages, cultures, uh, faith traditions and beliefs, as well as income, income levels and educational accomplishments. It just has to be their first child. It has to be their first okay. child, and they have to live in the county in which we are providing services. Okay. The program that Amanda's in is a tribal home visiting program. Why is this an effective tool for families that you're working with? What, what kinds of issues are they facing that this can address? I think it can address anything that the family is really wanting su additional support. I think another good thing is that if you have any goal for yourself and your child that there's somebody there helping you along the way. So I feel like home visiting really 
supports that family um, dynamic to help you get to where you want to be. We've had a few uh, families that have been homeless, some single mothers, um, where we've helped them find either um, resources for shelter or even to find um, ways to get into an apartment so that they can be stable and they have um, you know, just the basics to help raise their child. So sometimes these families are in situations that are the very displaced from their own communities and they're in urban settings where they have no family basically to help them with just the basic, like I said, basic needs. The family is stabilized, therefore the child feels more secure. <clears throat> yeah, and I think more self-sufficient in mm -hmm. just the things that they need to do to raise their child. Okay. And Nina, you are working with a program where it's, um, you actually are visiting moms before they even give birth. That's right, yep. And then they can transition into early Head Start. Talk about the importance of home visiting even before the child comes. Um, studies have shown that the earlier that you start uh, parenting education and also childbirth and pregnancy education, the larger the impact it will have. Um, an example of that is with breastfeeding education. The earlier you start that, the more likely a mom is going to breastfeed and the continuation of breastfeeding is going to last for a longer period of time. Why um, is that important? It's important for the family well-being, for the health of the family. Additionally, we uh, make our program flexible to whatever the mother's needs are. And so if her need is housing, that you meet that basic need. Um, we want to meet the basic needs of home and food and all of those things because children and families can't thrive unless those basic needs are met. And then once they're born, um, you're not the home visitor, but they can move into YDI programs under Early Head Start? That's correct. And, and is yeah. it a home visiting program? There are two it? options with Early Head Start. They're either center-based or home visiting. The mm -hmm. home visiting is a weekly home visiting program, and it, um, it's sort of a continuation of what I've started with parent education, um, early childhood education. The um, alternative is center-based, where the um, child will be at the center five days a week. I see. And Diane, I know um, there was a study recently of your program. Yes. One of the outcomes was all the parents feel that we're, I'm here to provide the basic necessities. The parents who had home visiting, it was a little bit broader sort of idea that, well, um, I need to help us help the child and the family to thrive. Mm -hmm. Why yes. is that a key difference? Raising your child is so much more than just making sure that they're clothed and fed and have a roof over their head and have uh, proper supervision. It, it's, it's about helping them grow and develop as a human being. Every week when we're in the home, we, we teach mom and we help mom with activities that she can do throughout the week and hopefully make part of her regular routine so that in turn, whether it's reading, you know, we, uh, or, or whether it's playing with your child. So many moms forget how important it is to play with your child because as a parent, you are your child's best toy. <laughs> you are absolutely your child's best toy because they can play with you. And that is that is so in, important in terms of socialization, social development, language, cognitive development, and, and all the rest. Louise, you were nodding at a lot of that. Um, why don't parents naturally know a lot of these things? It's interesting because I have found that a lot of the young families that I work with have had a lot of tough times, a lot of trauma in their families and things like that. And they're choosing to have a home visitor. So I say, so to them, what made you want to do this? You know, risk having somebody come to your house and, you know, maybe bug you. And a lot of them say, you know, I'm realizing what I did not get and I want to do it differently, but I don't know how. We use a particular um, model that's called Partners in Parenting Education, that's sort of activities that get at those things like, you know, um, just social and emotional regulation, for example, which is, sounds really big and stuff, but it's really the most predictive of success in life, which is getting along with people, understanding boundaries and limits, how to work with other people. And so we're sort of 
parallel process with the parent. We're helping the parent to be the parent they want to be. I think Amanda had said she got on the internet and she can find the facts, but it's still not the same thing as having a person in a relationship who can walk and talk through a process. Am, am I on the right track with, with yeah. that? I, I think, is that correct what you're? Absolutely. Yeah. It is about the relationship. Many of the families we work with um, have never had a relationship that, that was fairly functional. Mm -hmm. where, and many of them will test, a, a lot, especially the adolescents. They will sort of flake out for a minute, not be there for your visits. And if you keep coming back and say, I really care about you, you can continue the relationship even through difficult times. And when you've been there from the pregnancy, as we are at Nurse Family Partnership, until the baby's two, you have almost three years with the family to actually transition uh, the young people through graduating from high school into college or into work, out of the homes, into apartments, um, creating. The, they need help with those transitions. And it's a really important time. I wanted to ask Nina, in terms of relationships, part of, I think, what home visitors screen for, particularly you if you're visiting pregnant women, are th how the mom is doing in terms of things like postpartum depression, which is often something very difficult to talk about. The goal is to become a part of their community and not be looked at as a service coming in, <clears throat> but be looked at as someone that they know and trust, like more as a friend. And I think from that, in, when, you be, when you find that place with that parent, then situations like postpartum depression or um, violence in the family, they're more likely to open up to, the, to you about those things, and then you can provide them with the resources that they might need. Because I'm sure people are telling you, oh, this is the happiest time of your life. Right, so because, and that's what they're <laughs> The last about. thing you're gonna say is, I'm depressed. I'd like right. to add to that, <laughs> that actually our role, I just had this this week where a, a young woman does have postpartum, uh, or actually she's pregnant, so she, it's not postpartum depression, it's perinatal depression. And um, her partner, uh, when she said, you know, I'm gonna call, I'm making this appointment, said, oh, you don't need that, we're fine. And so um, I was able to sit down with both of them and say, you know, this, this really is serious and it's really not anything about you. It's something that's happening with her. And he was able to come to this place where, okay, let's do that. Let's call and make that appointment because it's also threatening in, in many families for somebody to go out and do counseling. So we have to sometimes just kind of work with the whole unit. And Joe, can you talk a little bit about what's happening with kids at this age, well even prenatal, <laughs> in terms of brain development that is at underlying all this, why it's so important? Yeah. The more that child is nurtured, the, the parents are responding to their needs, that helps the the brain grow. So 85% uh, of brain, uh, brain growth happens between uh, birth and let's say uh, age three and a half. So this is a crucial time. And so there's science behind what we're doing. It's not like this just kind of feels good and we think it's a good idea. There's science behind it to show that what we do with these babies early on with these infants and toddlers is gonna have a, a, a strong effect on their brain development. Did you feel, I mean, did you know that, Amanda, when you were going into this, or was it like, did you even think about that? Was it more like, I need support as a new parent? I needed a lot of support with everything, especially with breastfeeding in the beginning, and what do I do when the baby cries, and what do I do whenever the baby is hungry and burping and everything in prenatal, I didn't, or in, when the baby was just born, I didn't know anything at all home visiting, they were there for me throughout the whole thing. It's not really just um, just child development, but we also set goals um, for my future and for our future as a family when it came to education and when it came to getting a job. And um, I also built a really good relationship with my home visitor as far as personal issues and home visiting, they, they would um, write me a referral to counseling or anything that I needed help with, and it does help a lot. 
Um, Marisol, you guys also launched another kind of home visiting program funded by Krista St. Vincent. As a result of, of limited resources, folks in the community were discussing how do we at least provide something for everybody. And um, we had really progressive leadership at our local hospital and other folks around the community. And so Krista St. Vincent made a decision to fund a shorter term home visitation program for all families who are interested in Santa Fe County. So it's, uh, we offer three visits in the first 30 days to all children and all families who are interested. Um, sometimes families want more than that and if they're first time parents or, or you know specific issues come up, there are other community partners we refer to post the three visits. Sometimes families say no when they're in the hospital but get home and realize, wow, I'm really struggling with lactation or you know, issues come up and then they have our card and they can call us and self-refer following. So what's the outcome? Has I, it's basically a way so they don't end up going back to the ER? Or they well, don't? that's the thinking. So when you look strategically from a funding perspective, a pediatric emergency visit is extremely expensive. I've heard anywhere between $3,000 and $6,000 for a visit. So the concept behind this program was to get somebody into the home in the first, you know, three to five days after leaving the hospital, um, although we also serve families who have home births as well, but, um, or birthing center births, but to get into the home in the first few days to just make sure that everything's going okay. Leroy, we've heard a lot so far about resources. Can you give us an idea of what, how, how many people are we reaching? In well, I, I think that by the last count, uh, doing a study in 2014, uh, showed that in New Mexico, home visiting was reaching less than 2% of the eligible kids between zero and five years of age. And we have counties that don't even have home there visiting? There are still some counties that don't have home visiting. Is that a funding or capacity? I, I don't know. I think that's probably something the state of New Mexico would probably know okay. more about. I know there's an effort to expand home visiting and a lot has happened in the last uh, three or four years to achieve that but still if you think about services like pre-k which reach thirty percent of the eligible kids and home visiting is less than two percent what are the constraints right now in growing this I think it really doesn't say a whole lot when you say home visiting well someone's gonna come to my home what's gonna happen next you know we've got to do a better job of really helping people understand what the service is in order for them to be uh, uh, receptive to it. One of our challenges has been to gather more support from tribal leaders or government um, officials um, in any level to support home visiting, but also tr explaining exactly what home visiting, what those benefits are for not just a family, but for the whole community as well. There's enormous community benefits that can happen from home visiting services. So um, just wanted to add to Joe's comment. And I think you know one of the primary uh, positions are pediatricians. And we've been successful in making some connections with pediatricians with different health uh, care systems because typically that's that point of contact for families with new babies is their pediatrician. And if they have a good understanding of what home visiting is and can explain it in a way that um, the family feels comfortable, it's more likely to happen. I would there add was, to that mm -hmm. prenatal uh, providers, midwives, mm -hmm. uh, OBs, um, because the sooner the better as you pointed out, Nina, that that prenatal period is like a window of opportunity. Um, and before that mother has um, that, you know, oh my gosh, what do I do now with this baby feeling um, to really walk <laughs> through it, talk through it, talk about the labor experience, talk about breastfeeding and really weigh the pros and cons about their life and how that will work. Mm -hmm. And at Nurse Family Partnership, we've had great success. We've had in our, year in the last year a hundred percent have uh, initiated breastfeeding mm. oh, that's and impressive. at six months we had 58 percent still breastfeeding mm. so that is a really good number and breastfeeding not only is it better for the baby's health and the mother's health but cognitive development um, and attachment is much greater baby gets so much more than just food from breastfeeding I, I wanted to just jump in. You asked about um, what's needed. I think one of the, recently the Pew Charitable Trust Fund did a um, 
some research around marketing of mm -hmm. home visiting and found that you know they hired the big business marketing folks that said people are turned off because of the name itself home visiting and so you know we talk and a do lot you mean parents but also policymakers who could um, I would guess probably everybody visiting? and okay. again people have mentioned what is home visiting if we could reframe it in a family or community support type of term, I think that would be, because we're all part of communities and we're all part of families. And so it doesn't feel like it's, you know, targeted for a certain group. I think we really need to turn the whole message around to say we're, we're a state that supports our, our communities. And this is one of the ways in which we get at mm. that, no matter who we are or wh what our backgrounds are. What do you want to say, Leo? Well, I, I would like to add, too, <laughs> I, I think we have information that we're not using to the best Absolutely. extent. In other words, the, the state programs have been collecting data for about eight years on home visiting. I mean, and like longitudinal data? Longitudinal. Okay. And I think there are opportunities to look at that information and, and see how New Mexico fits. I think if you look at data uh, uh, nationally, you'll see examples of the successes of home visiting, but we're at a place now where we have data, what, what we need to use it and see what we can learn from that. So I think we can learn from just what's going on around us and perhaps also help shape this so that people have an easier time getting access to that. Well, we're going to move to the second part and bring in some of our leadership and we'll continue this discussion around some of those issues and how we can move forward on this.